Well, this is not a tutorial I thought I would be recording. I did not think I had the know-how to do this, but turns out you all want it. So last week what happened is I posted up a video and more of the comments on the video were less about the actual video itself, which I thought was pretty good, and more about the actual thumbnail that was on that video. And so that's what it looked like. And I'm gonna show you today all of my tips around creating really great thumbnails that obviously get people's attention. Um, and so if you don't know me, my name is Jackie. I am a graphic designer who loves teaching business owners how they can create their own incredible brand and graphics. And so what you're gonna to learn today is a mix of Canva, and it's also a mix of strategy because I believe that you can learn Canva as much as you want, but unless you know design strategy and theory and communication, your designs aren't going to perform the way that they should anyway. So let's get into today's episode. Okay, so here is the thumbnail in question. I'm going to show you through the different tips that I recommend uh, and then show you actually me creating a thumbnail. This was the one that everyone really loved and I want to step you through the things that I did in here and why people loved it and how you can then create your own version of this. So the first thing I recommend is having a really punchy title. I don't want to see more than 20 or so different words for your design because if there's too many words people aren't going to read it. As you can see here it says Canva AI Game Changers and then down the bottom it's got the Canva tutorial little stamp that I put on all my tutorials to make sure that's super recognizable. Uh, and so when you have less text it's more likely that people will read it and it's more likely that the thing you want people to read will stand out the most. Don't forget you've also got the video title underneath the video to actually expand more. So my, one of my tricks is I don't put men, much of the same text at all that's in the thumbnail that's in the video title so that I've got as much room as possible to say more different things. I usually expand on the video thumbnail in the actual title so that I get more bang for buck. And so putting some really punchy words in there, try to make it, you don't want to make it clickbaity, but you also want to make it really relevant that the person you want to watch this video is going to see it and think, well, I need to watch that. It's going to really catch their attention when they're scrolling in their YouTube suggested areas or they're looking in the tutorial section or they've just searched something and they're trying to find what they're looking for. And so having really punchy pieces of text there can be really important um, and making sure that that's really, really readable. So right now you're seeing this picture really, really large, but it could also be so, 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 so small. And so you want to make, make sure that text is actually big enough to read when it's super, super small. And it's not big, not just big enough to read and be legible, but big enough to stand out and capture people's attention. And so making sure that text is readable, standing out um, and making sure that it's punchy text. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do this in the tutorial coming up. I also recommend using a picture of yourself. So if, like me, if you are a personal brand um, doing tutorials or actual content of speaking to camera, this is gonna be relevant for you. If you're doing other content, you can ignore this one. It'll, you can work out what's relevant for your, your niche and your business area and all those different things. But for me, having a picture of myself on the thumbnail does a lot better because people are getting to know me. P people are beginning to recognize me. People connect with people. People when there's a human being there, they're like, oh, there's a human being that I can get to know rather than it's just this faceless person that's probably AI is just totally generated. It doesn't even matter anyway. Like we, we want people, people connect with people. And so don't be afraid to show your face, particularly if your face is somewhere in the video as well. It helps people to connect with that. And so usually I like to use a picture from the actual video. So you're taking a screenshot or a thumbnail or taking a picture after I've recorded the video. This one, I forgot to do that. So I just used, I am wearing the same outfit, but this is actually an image from a photo shoot that I did. So you don't have great imagery from your actual video, feel free to use a um, picture that you've already got taken. But like, even for me, I just tried to wear the same outfit so that it felt similar enough that when someone clicked on the video, it didn't feel like it was disconnected. It was still the same person wearing the same thing, same similar hairstyle as well. Um, and then what I recommend doing is finding relevant imagery. And so if you're doing a tutorial, having pictures from that tutorial in the image. Um, if you're doing like for me, I do lots of Instagram tutorials or Canva tutorials, and I make sure I have those logos in my design. So it really screams Instagram and anyone who's interested in Instagram that will capture their attention or also doing things like are you afraid to show up and then kind of doing like a little emojis that have people looking afraid or just trying to picture how can I visually represent what this video is about in an image and so for me here for this one I've got the little the AI symbol literally I just searched AI in Canva and this was an element that came up and I just whacked it behind my picture it wasn't it wasn't complicated to do but just working in imagery that's relevant to my audience relevant to my video is going to help your video to stand out more because it's connecting dots for people also make sure you have have some good hierarchy. This is more relevant in my other titles. I'm actually going to exit this for now so you can see my other video titles. Um, but pretty much 
say for this one here, I've got two parts of text. I've got Instagram hack and I've also got seamless pinned posts. I wanted to make sure seamless pinned posts stood out the most, but the Instagram hacks was there first. Not all of the text has the same amount of hierarchy or importance. This one here, stand out is, is, is standing out the most. And then on social media is standing out the second amount of most because I want people to feel like, oh, I really want to stand out. This one here, this is a great example of hierarchy. Fonts is standing out the most. Even if I make this really small, you're seeing fonts, like fonts is just right there. So anyone looking for help on fonts, it's going to see this one and then they're going to say, oh, for your brand, how to choose. I'm super interested in that. Like, So keep your text small, but also feel free to highlight particular parts of that text that's going to be the most important so it stands out even more and becomes less overwhelming to look at because there's a clear place where your audience can look to and then read the rest of the text. And so, yeah, don't be afraid to create hierarchy in your designs. Even this one here, marketing mistakes is biggest. Are you making these is still there, but it's when you, when you zoom out and when you're looking at this quickly, you're going to see marketing mistakes first. That's going to stand out the most. So you can do this by using different sizing. You can do this by using different backgrounds of your text. Like I've got different color backgrounds here that are, that are making it stand out more. Or if I wanted this to stand out even less, I could have done no background there and it would stand out even less to make sure the marketing mistakes was really the hero of this piece. Um, and also just making sure that you have your good branding. So for me, you can see all of these posts down here. They are so clearly my brand. So if you haven't already, make sure you think about your branding. This is my specialty. So there's a thousand other tutorials here on my channel around creating your branding. So feel free to give those a watch if you're feeling lost. But in essence, I have particular fonts, elements and colors that I always, always use every single time I create a graphic. And that way my graphics look so, so recognizable, so, so professional and so, so consistent. So when someone comes to my, my YouTube, it looks like I've thought things through. If they see me on their recommended list, they're like, oh, what's Jackie doing today? all these different things. It helps when there's that consistency. And for my branding, I've made sure it attracts my audience um, and that it's uh, appealing to the people that I want to work with. And so when I use that consistently, I know that it's going to be attracting the right people. So that's the power of branding. So those are the main things I want to talk about. There's a few other little things and I'm going to go through those more as we actually create the design. So when you're designing your thumbnail, first place you need to go is just open up Canva. Obviously, I'm going to teach you how to do it in Canva. Press this little plus button or if you're in the web page rather than the app like I'm in now, just go to the create a new design section, press plus, and I'm going to type in here thumbnail, thumbnail, and it's right here. I don't have to work, about, work out the sizing or do anything else. It's just here. To be honest, though, I probably even wouldn't do this size. I actually prefer to do the dimensions I'm going to show you now. I think this size would work fine, but my preferred dimensions are 1920 by 1080. This is just stand, standard screen size and this makes sure it's going to be super high quality um, and not going to look pixelated or gross when people view it large or when people view it small. Starting out just like this, a blank page. Now you can start out with a template if you like. There are heaps of, if I just even search thumbnail in here, there should be heaps of different templates that are going to pop up. So these have a lot of good things going for them. So feel free to start there if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed. But in essence, I like to just start with my text and my imagery to start to work out what's my hierarchy going to be here? What's this going to be? So I haven't prepared this at all because I wanted you to see what my mind thought of as I continued through this process. So for me, the next video that I'm posting, which is going to be posted a few days before you're actually seeing this one live, is about my YouTube journey. So how I kind of grew my YouTube, um, which is kind of wild because it's grown in like three months. So I don't really feel qualified to speak to this, but I wanted to share where I was at so far, how I'd grown, um, the different things that I did. So a few different text pieces that I've been thinking about are just really simple ones. Like I tricked everyone. I say this because um, my YouTube grew way too quickly and I think it was because I looked like I was professional when I actually was, that was my first video. Um, so that one, how I grew my YouTube so quickly and then there could be a lot of clickbaity ones for this one. I grew my YouTube quickly. I feel like I could make that punchier and stronger. Um, how I grew my YouTube so fast. I'm gonna do something like this, story, story time, how I grew my YouTube. I feel like I could be more consistent, more like punchy. Um, how I grew my YouTube to almost 10,000 subscribers in like, I think I'm going to make that as a thumbnail, as a type video title, actually. I'm going to do like, oh, I can, mm, it's so hard to think of the right text. Really you want to put on your marketing hat for this. I'm going to just duplicate this so I can think of a new one. Um, growing um, 9,000 subscribers in three months. 
something, something like that. I'm going to go with the first one. You'll have to check back on the video to see which thumbnail I ended up using. But for now, I'm going to go with this because it's got, it's got some good hierarchy and some good, some good punchiness to it. So let's now use a photo. So this one, I actually did remember to take a photo. So I've got a few different options for myself here. Again, I'm not sure which one I really love. This one here is an interesting one, how I grew my YouTube channel so fast. What I tend to do is make sure that I'm, yeah, as I said, wearing the same kind of outfit. Um, and I usually just cut the background out because my background is nice, but it's no, it's not going to really attract anyone. Um, if you've got more of a, like some people have more of a lifestyle vloggy kind of vibe, just use that background fine. Like Katie Steckley, for example, if you have a look at her feed, it's totally different to what mine looks like, but it really obviously works for her. This image isn't as clear as I would like, but I think it's going to do okay. What I'm going to do is use a background remover inside Canva to take away the background. And then I'm going to grab my actual backgrounds that I love to use. So I have a whole folder sitting over here for my brand elements. And so I'm just going to go in here and grab my nice kind of purple background in here, pop that in there. And I'm also just going to make this a bit more faded and then put a stronger purple behind it. So it feels more punchy. You've got this here. This didn't cut out amazingly. So I'm just going to go to the edit here and just erase this bottom bit down here to fix it up a little bit. And you'll see this image because this is straight out of the camera, it's feeling a bit flat. If you like to edit your photos using different place, different programs like Adobe Lightroom and whatnot, which I often do, but often actually can't be bothered doing for my, <laughs> my YouTube thumbnails, um, you can actually just edit it inside Canva. It is nowhere near as good as um, the Adobe Lightroom and whatnot. So if you want to go there, I recommend that. But for me, I don't usually have time. So I just do a bit of a fudge edit here. So I'm going to go to the brightness, bring that up. I'm going to go to contrast, bring that up, kind of make it a lot more punchy. Um, as you can see, it's not incredible. I'm also going to bring the clarity up so it feels a bit more um, detailed, I guess is what I'm looking for. Highlights, what I'm gonna do there, there, maybe there, bring that up. Just making it a bit more vibrant, I think. I can also bring the vibrance up because obviously my brand is quite vibrant and bright. I wanna make sure I'm mimicking that in my actual thumbnails. I can make this a bit bigger, maybe cut myself off to the side here. I'm not loving this image. Let's see what else I've got going. Uploads, I've also got this one. I kind of like that this is, me pointing up for like how I grew YouTube so fast, but I don't love that you can't see my eyes so well. I squinted a lot. Um, and ideally the more you see people see your eyes kind of the better I feel, or I could do something like this one here, how I grew my YouTube so fast <laughs> or something like this one here. Um, I'm so interested. I wish this was live so I could actually get your opinion on which one you feel like would work best. I'm going to do Oh man, they all, they all have different things going for them. Like this one here is good because I'm actually looking at the camera. Um, but this one here, I kind of like, it feels a bit more, I don't know. I'm going to just go over this one again, check in to see which one I actually did on this, um, this tutorial. Um, again, I'm just going to bring it a bit larger. Hopefully it cuts myself out better that I don't have to do any editing on that. All right, next I want to do some some text. So this is one of my brand fonts, but it's my body text font. So I'm going to change this to being my, um, my, my main my main text font, um, how I grew my YouTube so fast. I really want YouTube to really stand out here. And I want to, I want to grew my YouTube really to stand out and kind of want so fast as well. So many different pieces of hierarchy to think through. I'm going to make this go like this, make that small. That's just kind of like a little filler piece to kind of, it's really is a story time. It's not me kind of giving lessons on things as much as I do give some advice. It's more just me saying, this is what worked for me. I'm just going to edit that again. Maybe bring the contrast up Maybe bring up the sharpness a little bit oh sharpness is nicer and the clarity i wouldn't do this normally but i feel like it's a nice vibe for youtube ones what i could also do i'm just going to actually edit this background not the background yeah the background removal here draw in here draw in here and then i'm going to go to uh shadows here and bring the shadow back if you were watching my one of my first tutorials um Canva had taken away the shadows for a, a brief moment but thankfully they're back so we're all good sometimes it glitches like this so which is annoying sometimes it'll fix itself i'm just going to leave that there for a moment and see if it decides to work out what it's doing how i i want grew my youtube to be different so i'm going to maybe put um, I'm going to duplicate this and do so fast on one i also want that to stand out so i'm going to put how i grew my youtube in a different line to how I grew my YouTube. Really, we're just thinking about this hierarchy piece and how we can make things stand out. How I grew my YouTube so fast. And I want grew my YouTube, I'm gonna put that in all caps. I'm gonna put that in my slightly bolder version and bring the line spacing a bit smaller. Then I'm gonna to go to, the way that I've been doing my, my YouTube things is by going to the background section here, putting the roundness down to zero and then making the spread a bit smaller and making this a really punchy color, which for me can either be this one or um, a darker version of this purple here. So there, and obviously making the text white or a light color so it really stands out. So you can see that standing out a lot now. This clearly didn't fix itself, which is so frustrating. I'm gonna go back, there we go. Oh, this can be so frustrating sometimes. You really would hope they would get this right by now, but I'm gonna just click out of it there. 
click out of that there. Nope, it's still doing it. That's so annoying. If you get these glitches, know that it's not just you. I'm gonna keep that there for now. I'll fix it again in a moment. Um, story time, I'll move that over there. That's not important yet. Um, I'm gonna put this, have a little um, block behind that too. Again, bring that down, make this more of a fun fun color. This doesn't need to be something that's super clear, but I do want it to be, to be fun. So I'm gonna just maybe rotate this a little bit. I'm gonna also make this bolder um, for my heavy font and this one too, um, and then maybe grab this one again put the background on it I can use the same blue maybe a darker blue because I want this to be like I want fast to be like this is why people care you know they're going to care about it I grew it fast because like you can someone can grow their YouTube over 10 years and it's still a wonderful feat but it's not as impressive I guess or not, not as click worthy I hope that doesn't sound bad bring that as big as I can possibly get it and now I want to think about visuals so fast um, I'm going to do if I just type in fast sometimes sorry sometimes there'll be different kind of graphics like this so these are kind of things that are fast so I like this one here I like that it's got the little whooshies and I like that it's got the clock on it so that could be something to use there and I also want YouTube because YouTube is going to be people that are interested in growing their YouTube is what's going to who, attract these things too so if I have YouTube icons and stuff in here that's going to help to attract them so I'm just going to use this one here this is my brand colors but that's going to help it to pop out even more so I'm going to stick that stick that by still having the YouTube colors not my actual branding colors that I could change up here all right I really need to have this fixed now because it's starting to wreck with my actual layout and <laughs> this picture kind of um, doesn't really support this message here I might even take another photo we'll see what happens I also don't know how to fix this I haven't come across it not working this much I edit this a tiny bit none outline let's just try it again okay it stayed I just had to do it again I hope it stays again um, I'm also going to add in some of my brand elements I'm going to go down to my brand elements folder here maybe add in a cloud not that cloud I want a different cloud maybe this cloud flip said cloud bring him down there my brand elements is what really makes these be unique and be more like me. Um, so I really recommend finding whatever your brand elements are. They don't have to be as crazy as mine. Mine are very um, out there, um, but that's because that's what my branding is. I think I'm going to delete this story time. Yeah, those don't need that. Now I'm going to make these so much bigger because I can have them a little bit overlapping me because this part of me isn't really that important. So I can overlap it. I wouldn't do something like this because my hand is important, but bringing it down to more like here can be helpful. And then I could either bring this across more or I'll keep it there. Either is probably okay. And this is a little bit too busy. So if I zoom out here, I can still see it. Um, I'm actually, hmm, even bring this to be here. And I'm going to change this to being a brand color or something relevant. I can use this or blue white sometimes it's a lot about trial and error um, I'm gonna go there I like that one I could use a different element here I'm not loving that it's kind of empty there so I might even see if there's a different version I can use I'm gonna type in fast again and just see what kind of thing is there I could use this one if I wanted to I don't mind actually this one the reason being is that it's red again not one of my brand colors but it matches the red of the YouTube icon here which helps to create some balance and helps to create some consistency in the graphics so I'm actually going to see if I can actually overlay that on top of my um, text here yeah I think that's working nicely I'm going to bring this across a little bit cool again I'm going to zoom out a little bit zoom back in check that it's actually working for me I also usually add in some color blobs behind my designs again this is totally just a branding me thing this is not this is, isn't what your designs have to be but I just find it creates a little bit of impact in my design so I'm just going to grab my maybe I could add a blue one over here just put that in the background to create some some depth to my designs again this is just a really a personal preference thing that down there instead I think we're getting there how I grew my YouTube so far so fast I'm going to actually just angle this a smidgen too just so it mimics the same playfulness as the other two parts okay I think I'm happy so then what I would do is just press share and then download this as a PNG file. You could do JPEG as well, but I find JPEG makes it a bit smaller and we don't need to worry about making it too small for our YouTube images. And so then you would just save it, add it to your thumbnail and you are good to go. So I hope you found that helpful. Thank you so much for watching and tracking along with me as we created that. Um, if you haven't already, please make sure you hit subscribe. There are so many more tutorials and interesting things to come and I would love to serve you. And if you're really looking forward to learning about your branding and actually creating graphics that succeed and that communicate and that do the job rather than just sitting there looking pretty or maybe even not looking pretty, then I have a free video series I would love to invite you to. It's three 20 minute videos that you can binge or you can watch them over a couple of days. And inside there, I teach you some really foundational things about branding, choosing your own graphics um, and really making sure that your graphics and your image images and your Canva designs are communicating in a way that's going to draw in people, convert them and help your business to grow because of it. Because if we're creating graphics that are really doing those things, people are more likely to trust us, more likely to spend with us and more likely to continue working with us. So thank you for joining me.
Hope you'll join the Seriously in Business video series. Totally free. I would love to see you in there. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit like, and let me know which of those tips for creating a thumbnail that you found the most helpful in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time for another episode. Bye.